created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look Many years ago, in a land called Egypt, there lived a very mean king. Egyptian kings were called pharaohs. Faster, better, more. The Pharaoh made all of the people of Israel living in Egypt work as slaves. They had to build the buildings and lift many heavy things. They had no time to rest and little to eat. They were not free and they were very unhappy. But the worst thing of all was, one day the Pharaoh decided that the firstborn sons of the Israelites would be killed. Oh no! They won't get my baby. I'll find some way to save him. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, decided to float her baby down the river. Shh, don't be afraid. I won't let the Pharaoh hurt you. Your sister Miriam will be right here to make sure you're safe. baby needs a home. I'll take him to the palace and take care of him there. Excuse me, princess. If you need a nurse for the baby, I know a good one who lives nearby. Her name is Jochebed. Thank you. Bring her to the palace. They named the baby Moses, and he was raised in the Pharaoh's palace as an Egyptian. But Jochebed was near Moses while he was a child to teach him right from wrong. Ha <laughs> ha! Moses, time for your lessons. Now, did you do your homework? Sure I did. When I went out this morning, I saw a slave master hitting one of the Israelites. He was wrong, Moses. All people should be treated with respect. And Jochebed taught him that the Israelites in Egypt were unhappy because they were not free. Many years later, when Moses grew up to be a strong young man, he came upon some Egyptians who were treating people very poorly. You're lazy. Get up, get up and get back to work right now or else. Leave him alone. You shouldn't treat anyone like that. He deserves it. He's pretending he's hungry and tired because he's too lazy to work. I'm teaching him a lesson about... Leave him alone. (laughs) 
It was very unusual for someone to help an Israelite like that. Everyone told each other what happened. Moses was sure he had done the right thing. But he knew the Pharaoh would be very angry. So Moses left Egypt all by himself, knowing that he was really an Israelite. He wanted to go to another land where he would not have to see his people be treated so badly. After traveling for 40 days, Moses found himself in the land of Midian. In Midian, Moses got married and had a family. He lived in Midian for so long that he almost forgot about Egypt and about the poor Israelites. Until one day, Moses was looking after a flock of sheep up in the hills, and it was there that he saw an amazing sight. Come here, little guy. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> now I've got you. Huh? Moses, come closer. Uh, who's there? God. The Israelites in Egypt are unhappy because they are not free. Go to the Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Why have you chosen me? Don't be afraid. I will be with you. But will they believe me? I will give you signs to show the people that I am with you. Throw your staff on the ground. Now reach down and pick it up by the tail. Trust me, the people will believe you. Now go. And so Moses returned to Egypt to do what God said. Are you Moses? I have heard about you. What are you doing back here after all these years? I am here because God sent me. He wants you to free the people of Israel. Oh, he does, does he? Too bad for him. Who is this God, anyway? I've never heard of him. Have you? No, sir, your, your most, most royal, royal wonderful, wonderful highness. highness. Well, then. This god of yours must not exist, right? Yes, your most royal, wonderful highness. Right. You there, come here. We're too nice to the Israelites. After all, they have a big, strong god on their side. Tell my slave masters not to give them any more straw for the bricks they make. From now on, they have to find their own straw. Yes, your most royal wonderful. I said go! Ha! Don't try and tell me what to do. I'm the Pharaoh. It's time for your bath, your royal highness. Uh... I won't give up that easily. And so Moses returned. God wants you to let the Israelites go free. Oh, haven't we already done this? It'll take a miracle before I listen to another word you're saying. See the power of God, the only true and living God. Oh! Silence! Nothing but foolish tricks. Besides, watch this. Uh. 
Think twice before you try to trick me again. I am not trying to trick you. I am warning you. God can perform many miracles. <laughs> that proves nothing. Get out of my sight. I'll be back. And the next morning, Moses did come back. Pharaoh, let the Israelites go free. If you do not, God will let plagues happen to Egypt. The plagues will bring very bad things. No! See for yourself the power of God. It is blood. Just another magic trick. Ugh. Go away. You again? What do you want now? Let my people go. If you don't, God will let frogs come all over the land. Frogs will sleep in your bed and eat your food and... Frogs? I love frogs. Why, when I was a little boy... Uh, never mind about that right now. Who cares about a few frogs? Get out of here! Find Moses and bring him to me. Now. You, make the frogs go away. Do you promise to let the Israelites go free? Yes, yes, just get rid of these pesky things. God made the frogs go away, but the Pharaoh didn't keep his promise. He did not free the people of Israel. So God allowed more plagues to happen in Egypt. God let lots and lots of gnats come to Egypt. They flew everywhere. Flies flew everywhere. But the Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Israelites go, so the animals got very sick. And then boils grew on the skins of the Egyptians. And terrible hail fell down from the skies. And the locusts came. And ate their clothes. Next, everything was as dark as night for three whole days. Each time a plague happened to Egypt, the Pharaoh promised to let the people of Israel go free. But each time he changed his mind and broke his promise. Now will you let the people of Israel leave? No, I will not. I've tried to warn you, but you won't listen. Please hear me now, or you'll be very sorry. The last plague will be the worst. The firstborn sons of the Egyptians will die. What has your God done? He has taken my son from me. Leave Egypt at once and take your people with you. Moses told the Israelites to get ready to leave Egypt right away. He knew the Pharaoh might change his mind again, so they packed and left as fast as they could. I can't believe we're actually going. It's just as Moses promised. A land where we could be free. 
<laughs> it seems like a dream. But it's not a dream. At last, we're on our way home. So finally, the people of Israel left Egypt on the way to their homeland, the land of freedom. By day, a pillar of smoke guided them. And by night, a pillar of fire showed them the way. But back at the palace, the pharaoh had changed his mind again. I was a fool to let them go. Who will build our pyramids and grow our food and, and fan me when it is warm? We must get the Israelites back. Call my chariot. In the meantime, the Israelites had reached the Red Sea. Moses, look behind us! The Pharaoh's army! They'll be here soon! Oh no! Moses, what have you done to us? We would have been better off living unhappily in Egypt rather than dying here in the desert. Don't be afraid. God will protect us. Don't hurry, Moses. Rest tonight. Tomorrow morning, raise your hand and stretch out your staff over the sea. It will part, and you will be able to go through on dry land. Till morning, then we'll recapture them. And when morning came, Moses stood by the sea and waved his hand over the waters. And the 
the sea parted, just as God had promised. Come on, follow me. Come again! What are we going to do? Just wait. Then the sea fell upon the Egyptian army and stopped them. Thank you, God, for saving us. The Israelites passed through the Sinai Desert on their way to the land of Israel. When they were hungry, God sent them food. Mother, look! What is it? It was sweet, tasty bread that God had sent to feed the people. The Israelites called it manna, which meant, what is it? Mm. When the Israelites were thirsty, God sent them water. milk instead. <laughs> <laughs> when the Israelites reached Mount Sinai in the middle of the desert, they set up camp near the foot of the mountain. It was time for God to give the people his laws. Is happening Moses what does God want God is calling me I'm sure he has great plans for us I must go ahead and Moses climbed to the top of the mountain I am ready for you I have rules that I want to give the people of Israel. If they follow them, I will protect the people. Chisel out two stones and I will write them down. Always respect your father and mother. Do not kill anybody. Do not steal anything. God gave many other laws. He also told Moses how to build the home of worship where the Israelites would pray to God. God also told Moses that everybody should rest on the seventh day, just like he did when he created the world. Thank you, God. And this is how Moses led the people of Israel back to their homeland with the power of God and his sacred laws. These laws are called the Ten Commandments. Throughout the long journey, God helped Moses guide the Israelites home.
created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a In the land of Israel, there was a prophet named Jonah. A prophet taught other people about God and his love. Jonah told his friends and neighbors that God loved all people. And like God, Jonah tried to love all people and all creatures. Fish looks fresh today, Ophir. Yes, Jonah, the freshest you will ever meet or eat. You know how much I love eating fish. And I'll take a bag of peanuts. I see someone just as hungry as I am. <laughs> hungry, little dove? Here, take some of mine. We're all God's creatures. Sounds like someone's having an argument. This is my pot. No, it is mine. I saw it first. No, I did. I needed to carry water. I needed to carry raisins. Stop. Fighting never solves anything. Besides, you're making me dizzy. My friends, please. God doesn't want you fighting. It upsets him. Now neither of you gets the pot. You were acting badly, just like someone from the city of Nineveh. Do you want God to think we act like the Ninevites? Ah, no. no! No, Jonah. Sorry, Jonah. The Ninevites are enemies of our people. I heard they stole a boat full of fish. Come on. Yes, they are thieves. Yes, they are very bad people. See what happens when you fight. From now on, we will act like Israelites and not be bad like the Ninevites. So Jonah had a very important job. He taught people about God's laws. There came a day when God had an even bigger job for Jonah. Hello, Jonah. God, it's nice to hear your voice. I have an important job for you. What is it? I will do anything for you. There are some people who are not obeying my laws, Jonah. Look what they're doing. The people of Nineveh steal. They are not kind to each other. The children of Nineveh do not take care of older people. Others are lazy. And their king pretends not to see the problems. He only cares about eating all day 
and wearing fancy clothes. Yes, the Ninevites are bad. Send a flood or an earthquake to punish them. No, they are bad because they don't know about me. No one has taught them my laws. Jonah, your job is to go to Nineveh and tell them about me. Me? Go to Nineveh? I can't. Please give me some other job. Tell them of my love. But they are the enemies of my friends and neighbors. You must go, Jonah, right now. In 40 days, I will punish them for being bad. But if you're going to punish them, why should I go tell them about you at all? I don't understand. The Ninevites should be punished for being bad. But what if I tell them all about God and they change? Then maybe God won't punish them. I can't do something to help my enemies. Jonah was so confused, he asked his friends what he should do. You know, it's funny, Jonah. Usually, we come to you with questions. This time, I want to know what you think. How can I preach to the enemies of the Israelites? Simple. You can't. Oh, fear is right, Jonah. Don't go there. Don't tell them about God. You do have a problem, Jonah. If you don't preach to them, you disobey God. If you do preach to them, you'll disappoint all your friends. Nobody said being a prophet was easy, Ophir. <sighs> Wait, I know. I'll just hide from God. <laughs> sure, but where can you hide from God? Why, in your store, of course. I know my plan will work, Ophir. If I hide here for 40 days, then God will punish the Ninevites and no one will be mad at me. You call this a hiding place? Here, let me help you. Uh, Ophir, you don't have to go to that much trouble. Look, if you're going to hide from God, you've got to do it right. There. <laughs> and my shop's never been cleaner. Ophir, do you have any flour for baking biscuits? Yes, yes, in that basket. There. No! Wait! No! No! Now that everything's cleaned up, goodbye, Ophir. What? But Jonah, why are you leaving? I'm in the way, and I can't hide from God here in Israel. It's the first place he'd look for me. So where would you go? As far away from Nineveh as I can. I'll travel to the other side of the world, to a city called Tarshish. God will never find me there. We'll miss you, Jonah. Thank you. I have a very lonely trip ahead of me because God will not be with me. So Jonah traveled as far away as he could to run away from God. First, he walked across dry deserts. Then he climbed high mountains. He finally came to the town of Joppa and found a ship that was going to sail for Tarshish. Captain, my name is Jonah. Can I sail with you to Tarshish? Sorry, Jonah. This ship only carries sailors and cargo. Besides, it's bad luck to bring a stranger on board, you know. The sailors on this ship weren't Israelites. They believed in many different gods. Ahoy, mate! 
Help me with this statue! Sure! Why not? <clears throat> what? Please, Captain, I must sail away with you. Why? Because I am running away from God. Why? Because he gave me a job to do and I won't do it. I must hide so he won't find me. Ah! <gasps> Did you see that? A dove! He flew right to Jonah! A dove is a sign of good luck, Captain. Very good luck. With Jonah on board, we will have safe passage. They're right. Welcome aboard, Jonah. So Jonah set sail across the vast sea, headed to faraway Tarshish. Jonah saw that the sailors didn't pray to God. They worshiped statues made of stone. Excuse me, what are you doing? Feeding the god of water. If he has a full stomach, he'll make the seas calm. But this isn't a god, <laughs> it's just a rock. My god is the real one. He created the sea, the sky, the animals, all of us, everything. One god created all that? <laughs> I don't think so, Jonah. See, this is the sun god, the god of the wind, the god of plenty. With so much in the world, you need a lot of gods. Yeah, no one god can rule over everything. <laughs> yes, God does. He is the one and only God. Well then, if he is so wonderful, why are you running away from him? He wants me to go to Nineveh and tell them about him. But they are the enemies of my people, and we'd be better off without them. I've never seen a storm like that. Me either. We're in trouble. Whoa! to their gods, but the storm just grew stronger. Someone has brought our ship bad luck. Very bad luck. We must find out who it is. Let's throw lots. Then we'll know who brought this storm. The captain and his crew, being superstitious, believed that pieces of wood and bone would tell them who brought bad luck to their ship. There! The lots point to the man who brought us bad luck. <gasps> it's Jonah! Where did you come from, and who are your people? I am an Israelite, and I worship the God of heaven. I'm running away from him, and he has found you. Jonah, what can we do? How do we make the storm go away? Throw me overboard. You must save yourselves. Please, Captain. We have no choice. We must throw Jonah into the sea. His god is more powerful than any of our gods. Jonah, I'm sorry. We've done everything we could do. I know, Captain. It's not your fault. I made God angry. It's me, not you, who should be punished. God of the Israelites, we're sorry for having to throw Jonah into the sea. <laughs> Oh, 
power, Jonah. May your God forgive you, Jonah. Jonah found himself in the whale's belly. Now he was really alone. God, I'm sorry for trying to hide from you. Do you hear me, God? Jonah prayed to God for three days and three nights. After that, Jonah was no longer alone. Hello, Jonah. Oh, God. I'm so glad that you're here with me. You, you tried, tried to hide, hide from, from me. Oh, yes. And I now know that was really, really wrong. Jonah, you have learned your lesson. Come on, let's get you out of here. Jonah, Nineveh is behind that hill. Hurry, go tell them about me and about my love. God, I'm ready to do it now. So Jonah went to Nineveh. And what he had to say was so wonderful. All of the people listened. They believed, and best of all, they changed. God says we shouldn't steal from each other. We are all brothers and sisters in this world. Would you steal from your own family? God says we shouldn't hurt anyone weaker than us. Since we are all God's children, we should protect each other. Children, stop. 
God says we should honor our elders. Don't forget, they helped raise us and looked after us. Even the children were changed, and they gathered around Jonah, just like sheep around their shepherd. Hey, farmer, God says we all have jobs to do, and we should work hard. We should listen to him, since he's the one who gave this wonderful world to us. O oh, king of the Ninevites, this is no way to lead your people. God tells us to care for one another. Ha! Why should I care what your God thinks? Because he is going to punish everyone in this city for being bad. Nineveh will be like this grape. Please believe me, king of the Ninevites. I was sent by the one and the only God. You only have a few days. I do believe you, Jonah. Then know his love and obey his laws. That's all he wants. Jonah told the king all about God's laws. My people, people of Nineveh, hear me. For one week, all of us must fast. No one will eat anything for seven days, and all of us will wear rags. If we do this, we will show Jonah's God how sorry we are for acting so badly. After Jonah told the Ninevites about God and his laws, they changed their ways. Jonah then left the city. He sat on a hill above Nineveh to watch God punish them. Jonah, I'm proud of you. The Ninevites have changed their ways. But aren't you still going to punish them? I am not going to punish anyone, Jonah. But God, they are such bad people. Shouldn't they be punished? They have heard my voice through you, Jonah, and have changed their hearts. I love them as I love the Israelites, as I love all people. I was afraid of this. I saved the enemies of my people. Go home, Jonah. It will be okay. No, wait! Please, God, I am more confused than ever. Jonah didn't know what to do, where to go. He just started walking into the desert. Unfortunately, the desert was hot and he didn't have any food. I'm so tired. Hungry and thirsty. Thank you, God. Thank you for this plant and for saving me. The next morning, the plant was dead, and Jonah was mad. He was mad because God let a worm destroy the plant. Jonah. Why are you angry? You let this wonderful plant die that gave me food and shelter, like you took away my hope yesterday when you didn't punish the Ninevites. You're mad because the plant is dead. You cared more about this small plant than the whole city of Nineveh, but you didn't do anything to keep it alive. So? How do you think I'd feel if I punished all the people of Nineveh? There are men, women, and children that I made and cared for over many years. They never knew or loved me until you came. Shouldn't I still care about them? Yes. Yes, you should. Go home and tell your friends about Nineveh and the plant. So Jonah went home. I can't wait to see my friends and eat all my favorite foods. Except for one food. <laughs> it's going to be a long time before I eat fish again. Jonah was accepted back by his friends, and he spent the rest of his life teaching about God's laws, and especially about God's love.
Created it by hand From mighty mountains To the raging sea To every leaf On every single tree It's in the holy book Just open up and take a look A long time ago, there were many, many people on the earth. And everyone did whatever they wanted to without love for each other. They cared more about themselves than they did about other people. God was very sad because everyone had forgotten his way. Everyone, that is, except for Noah and his family. Noah and his family worked very hard, and they kept all of God's ways in their hearts. All right, that's enough for today. You boys can finish that tomorrow. Uh, uh, but Father, we almost had it. Just a few more minutes. God knows how hard you work, Japheth, my boy, and so do I. But God also wants us to keep up our strength so that we can do His work. You're right again, Father. You must be the wisest man in the world. Me? Oh, no. I might be the happiest man in the world, but the wisest? I think not. But enough talking. We'd better hurry. Ah, I think we're having your mother stew tonight. We wouldn't want it to get cold. <laughs> Noah and his family had a hard life, but they loved each other very much, and they always had enough to eat. Noah never forgot that it was God who made all of those things possible. And thank you, God, for everything you've given to me and my family. Thank you for the strength to work hard, and for fields that are good for growing, and for the food on our table. Amen. Amen. What's this? It sounds like we have visitors. Well, you must be hungry. Dear, will you please bring me a bit of meat and a bone from the stew? I think our friends need something to eat. All of God's creatures are important. There you go. Enjoy. Nothing like a good dinner, isn't that right? You're a good man, Noah. More? <laughs> One night after supper, everyone kissed Noah goodnight and went to bed. But Noah didn't go to bed at his usual time. He had a strange feeling. You look sleepy, dear. Why don't you go to bed? Are you coming? Soon. I don't feel tired. I think I'll go out and look at the stars for a bit. Noah went out of his house for some fresh air. He had a feeling he couldn't explain. He didn't know that God was leading him outside. Ooh, what is this? Noah? God, is that you? Yes, Noah, it is. 
Please listen to the important things I have to say to you. Noah, people do not love one another as they should. So I have decided to wash the earth with a flood and start over. This is terrible news. Don't be afraid, Noah. I'm telling you this because you are the only man who still has me in his heart. I have chosen you and your family to help me start over. Listen carefully. I want you to build a boat, Noah. An ark. So much to do. Oh, I've got to get my boys and have them help me. Wake up! I need you to help me with a big project. Yes, I'm serious. An ark. A big, big ark. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead and laugh. You'll see. <laughs> this field should be big enough. Build it from fresh, sticky wood. Make it 450 feet long, 75 feet across, and 45 feet high. Seal the planks with tar. Side. Build an upper, middle, and lower deck. Hi, Father! Hi. Make an opening all the way around the ark, just below the upper deck. Yay! And last, Put a door in the side big enough for the largest animals of the earth to walk through. Next, bring two of every animal on the earth with you, each with a safe place on the ark.
Noah and his family worked very hard. Father, we're finished! Yay! Yay! Done well, my sons. Oh. Where is this old man who says a flood is coming? <laughs> Lead me to the crazy fool. My father is no fool. Only a fool would build a big silly boat in the middle of his field. <laughs> now let's take a good look at. <gasps> You really are a crazy old man. Anyone who would do this. You would be wise to listen to what I say. God has told me that a terrible flood is coming. So much to do, so little time. Father. It's fair to warn them, Shem. Warn us about what? The flood that's never coming? <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Let's leave this crazy old man alone. There, there now. Thank you for helping us. I guess we made ourselves some friends, eh? <laughs> and it looks like we have our first passengers. Now, if I can only figure out how we're going to find all the rest of the animals. Quiet now, you two. Can't you see he's trying to think? Father, look! It's a miracle! And it was a miracle. God had done something wonderful. He would brought two of every animal to the ark. And they were on their very best behavior. Even the lions lay down with the lambs. Tigers? Wildebeests? <laughs> Zebras? Whoa! <laughs> God will protect us all. Well, that does it. Everybody's here. What do we do now, Father? We wait for the rain. It doesn't look like we'll have to wait long, Father. Look! Suddenly, the clouds began to gather and cold winds began to blow. Noah, the time has come to take your family and the animals onto the ark. Soon the rain will start. Let's go! Everybody on? All clear down here. Ready. I'll close the door. Be afraid, my dear. God will protect us all.
The rain covered the whole earth. Even the highest mountains disappeared underwater. Except for the animals and people on the ark, there was nothing else left. During their long trip, Noah and his family became very close with the animals. They were all good friends. watched to see when the rain would stop, but it just kept coming down. It rained and rained like it would never stop. It rained for a month, then another week. Then, after 40 days and 40 nights, the rain stopped. Noah was so excited, he called a family meeting. I've called you all here because I have a surprise for you. The rain has stopped. What? That's wonderful. <laughs> True. When do we get off? Well, I think if all goes well, the ground should start to peek through in about another, oh, six months or so. Everybody was disappointed to hear this news because although they all loved one another, they were all pretty tired of being on that ark. But they waited patiently. Many months passed.
Well, what did you see? What did you see? Same as always, uh... nothing but sea. We're never going to get off this boat. How are we even going to know if the land is dry? How are we even going to know if we're anywhere near land? This is hopeless. Now what kind of talk is that? Are you the same men who helped me build God's Ark? Hasn't he looked out for us this long? Of course, Father is right. But can we at least try to find out if there's any dry land? This got Noah thinking. Finally, he got an idea. He went and got one of the ravens and brought him to the slit in the ark. Then he let him go. He thought if the raven found land, he might bring something back with him. But when the raven returned, he didn't bring anything with him. So Noah decided he would try letting a dove go. Good luck! <laughs> but the dove returned with nothing as well. Aww. But Noah knew God wouldn't abandon them. He waited a while longer, then one last time, he sent out the dove again. This time, when the dove returned, it brought something back. In its mouth, it carried a branch from an olive tree. Father, this is wonderful news. We must be very close to dry land. Yes, son. If you believe in God, he will save us all. And you protected Yay! us too. And sure enough, very soon, the ark landed on top of a tall mountain. When it was safe to come out, God spoke to Noah again. Noah, you and your family and the animals can come out now. The earth is dry. Go out into the world and have many children and tell them about me. And so you will always know that I won't ever flood the world again. I'm going to leave a gift in the sky after it rains. Something to remind you of my promise. And so Noah and his family thanked God for all he had done for them. And Noah's sons had many, many good and strong children who loved God very much.
It was a very sad day when the king of Babylon surrounded Jerusalem with his army. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. Attack! The king and his army stole things that belonged to God. Then they destroyed his temple. The king then ordered that the stolen things be taken back to Babylon. But that was not all he stole. Ashpenaz, take the brightest young men in Jerusalem. They must be very healthy and very smart, so they can work for me in my palace. Don't touch those. They are from the temple. They belong to God. Take everything back to our kingdom. So the holy cups and plates belonging to God and Jerusalem's finest young men were carried hundreds of miles away to Babylon. Among those taken were Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And even though Daniel and his three friends were hundreds of miles away from their home and the house of God, they stayed loyal to God. Are you studying hard? This is impossible. We'll never learn to read and write your language. God was with Daniel and his friends. Your language is very interesting, Your Majesty. Teach us more. God gave them more wisdom than the other young students, and they loved him for it. In time, the king saw how the boys were ten times smarter than all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon. And God gave Daniel something special, the ability to know and understand dreams. It was a good thing, too. King Nebuchadnezzar began having a strange dream. Arioch! A dream that kept him up night after night. Bring me my best magician, wizard, and wise man. They must tell me what this dream means. Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, O oh king. Sleep, sleep. I've got to get my sleep. O oh king, live forever. What do you want to know? Ask any question. We have all the answers. Thank the gods. I have a most important question for you. Magician, wizard, and wise man. No, he's the wizard. He's the wise man. He's the magician, O king. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Do you want to know what is colder? Snow or a dog's nose? Or how to turn goat's milk into cloth? Or the number of giants living inside the earth? No, no, no! I have been having a very strange dream night after night. That's simple. Piece of cake. No problem. So tell me what it means. Okay, but tell us what your dream was. Then we'll tell you what it means. Oh, no. If you are so smart, first tell me what I dreamed, then tell me what it means. You want us to tell you what you already know? Then tell you what you don't know? But you'll know if we know what you already know? Yes, yes, yes. I knew you were smart. Are you kidding? No way. Forget it. Tell me what I dreamed right now, or, or I'll punish all of you. But no one on Earth can do such a thing. Only the gods can tell you that. And they don't live on Earth. That's it. Now I'm mad. 
I'll not only punish the three of you, but... but... Ariok! Get rid of all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon! Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, old king. Ariok went to Daniel's house. He told him about the king's order to punish every wise man in Babylon. Wait, Ariok. Please, don't harm anyone tonight. Daniel, you're my friend. I'll wait, but only until tomorrow morning. Let's pray, my friends. God must help us understand the king's secret dream. No one should be harmed over this. Wake up, Daniel. I've come to explain the king's secret dream to you. Thank you, God. Oh, king, there's someone here to tell you what your dream means. Impossible. Who could be smarter than my wizard, magician, and wise man? One of the captives from Judah. You can tell me about my dream? No, not I. Is this some joke, Ariok? But God in heaven can explain all secret things. Oh, I know what your dream means. I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I've heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Nebuchadnezzar, believe me, it's my pleasure to come here to you and shed some light. I've been praying to God and this may sound awfully odd, but I understand the dream you had last night. Saw a statue with a head of gold, he was bronze and iron with big clay toes, symbolized the kingdoms of this earth. The golden face that I saw shining means down here you're the number one king. I'm giving you the facts for all they're worth. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Now the rock that rolled on down and brought the statue to the ground Shows that earthly kingdoms soon will pass Yeah, the interpretation is that out of all the nations God's is the kingdom that will last Oh, I know what your dream means Oh, I know what your dream means God has told me to pass the word about what I seen and what I've heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I've heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy Exactly right. You are smarter than all of my wizards, magicians, and wise men put together. Not me, sire. God told me this secret, not because I'm greater than anyone else, but so you can know what it means. But what does it mean? You're king for now, but neither you nor your kingdom will last forever. 
but God's kingdom will last forever. Your God is the God of gods, the King of all kings. Your God tells people things they can't possibly know. You deserve a reward. From this moment on, you will rule over Babylon for me and be in charge of all my wise men. O oh, king, I beg you, do not punish them. Of course, anything you ask. Uh, what was your name again? Daniel, if I am to rule, I need help. I have three wise friends. Make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego leaders of Babylon as well. It shall be done, Daniel. Many years passed, and after King Nebuchadnezzar left the throne, his son Belshazzar became king. Daniel stayed in Babylon, and every day, three times a day, he faced Jerusalem and prayed to God. After so many years, Daniel was completely forgotten by the new king, Belshazzar. One night, King Belshazzar had a big party. The foolish king used cups and plates stolen from the house of God. <laughs> Is everyone having fun? By drinking from the stolen cups, he dishonored God. He only believed in false gods made from gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. <laughs> well, let us thank the gods for this wonderful party! <laughs> Magicians, wise men, come here, quickly! What does it say? Read it to me. Many, meany, tickle person. Many, meany, tickle person. Tell you what, anyone who can read those words uh, gets a gold chain! Eeny, meeny, tackle parsnip. Eeny, meeny, tackle parsnip. Eeny, meeny, tackle parsnip. How about this? A fine purple robe fit for a king. I'll even make you third highest ruler in my kingdom. Impossible. Infeasible. Inconceivable. Is there no one in my kingdom who can read these strange words? I know of someone, my son. Tell me, mother, who, who is it? In the days of your father, this man had wisdom like the gods. Call for Daniel. Are you Daniel? The one who believes in the god who created heaven and earth? Look, the gold chain, the purple robe, and third highest ruler in the kingdom. Everything is yours if you can read these words. King Belshazzar, keep your gifts or give them to someone else. Oh, then you can't read it either. But I can, and I will tell you what it says. Your father was so proud and stubborn he lost his kingdom. God rules over everything on earth, and He decides who will be king. You know all this, but you aren't sorry for the terrible things you've done. Tonight, you used cups and plates stolen from His temple. You have dishonored God. God himself sent the hand that wrote these words, Manet. 
God has counted the days until your kingdom will end. To Kale, you are not good enough to be king any longer. Ufarsin, your kingdom will be given to some other people. Daniel, I know you speak the truth. King Belshazzar kept his promise and gave Daniel the purple robes and golden chain and made him the third highest ruler in the land. What Daniel said did come true that very night. Another ruler, King Darius, took over the kingdom. The new king picked three men to rule the kingdom. And since God had made Daniel very wise, Daniel was one of the three. Soon, King Darius saw how Daniel was better than the other two men, and he planned to make Daniel the one and only ruler of the land. That made the other two men very angry. The two mean wise men wanted to make Daniel look bad. But he always told the truth and was not lazy nor dishonest. Ah, we must make Daniel look bad. But how? He is just too good. I have an idea. Daniel really, really believes in his God. We will <laughs> use that against him. <laughs> It's me, God, Daniel. I was right. Daniel faces Jerusalem and prays to his God three times a day. This plan will work. I can't wait to tell the king. Hey, it's my plan. I'll tell the king. Not if I get to him first. Why, you... Theirs was a terrible plan, a plan to get rid of Daniel. Oh, King Darius, you have many enemies. And we know how to find them. For 30 days, let's have a holiday throughout the kingdom. For 30 days, no one can pray to any god or any human except to you. Hmm, I kind of like the sound of that. But here's the best part. If they don't pray to you, they must be your enemy. So we throw them into the, the lion's den. den. By the gods, uh, I mean by me, I like it. A holiday for 30 days. Yes, a great holiday. A feast like no other. I must tell Daniel. It's a wonderful new law. Daniel heard about the new law, but he was still loyal to God. He's breaking the king's new law. My plan worked. Daniel is praying to his God. Let's throw him into the lion's den. Wait, it wasn't your plan. It was my plan. Was not. I'm much wiser than you. Oh. 
Oh, King Darius, we found someone who doesn't obey your new law. Unbelievable! Who is this terrible person? He is the Israelite, Daniel. No, not him. He prays three times a day to his god, just as he did before you made the law. <laughs> Shall it be two lions or three? I can't hurt Daniel. He's a trusted advisor and, more importantly, my friend. But King Darius, as you know... The law says no law given by the king can be changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. All right. <sighs> Take Daniel to the lion's den, my dear friend. What have I done? I'm sorry, Daniel. I don't want to do this. You have always been loyal to your god. Maybe he will save you from the lions. Don't worry. I won't be alone down there. So that no one would move the stone and let Daniel out of the den, King Darius sealed the opening with his royal seal. King Darius could not sleep that night. He was very worried about his friend. The next morning, King Darius ran to the lion's den. Oh, Daniel, has your god kept you safe? Open the lion's den! But there was nothing to fear. <laughs> You're up early, King Darius. Daniel was safe and sound. I can't believe my eyes. You're okay. When the lions attacked, God saved me. He sent an angel to close their mouths. The lions didn't hurt me because God knew I hadn't done anything wrong. And I haven't done anything wrong to you, O King. Daniel, I'm so happy. And you call yourselves wise men? Take them away. That was a terrible plan. Don't look at me, it was your big idea. Was not, was too. King Darius wrote a letter to everyone in the world. Peace and happiness to all. From now on, all of you will respect the God of Daniel. He is greater than any other God because he uses miracles to rescue and save people. Daniel continued working for King Darius and always stayed loyal to God. And God blessed him for the rest of his life. <laughs>